Hi, welcome back to EMT 1111 Logic and Problem Solving. In this short video, I will show you how to use variables, operators and expressions in App Inventor. There are a few things you should be familiar with before going over this video. First of all, you should understand the concepts of variables, expressions and statements. For this, you can check the video from week 3 following this URL. Second, you should be familiar with the main three windows that compose App Inventor. The Designer, the Blocks Editor, and how to run your program in either the emulator or a phone. To learn how to use variables, operators, and expressions, we will create a very simple program, the Final Cost Calculator. This program would ask the user for two things, the price or cost of what is buying and the sales tax percentage. After that, the program will calculate the final cost or price and print it out. Pretty easy, right? These are the program's requirements, and this is the list of things our program should do. In Python, which is very close to a pseudocode, you will need to write these statements. The whole program requires four variables. Price, to store the price or cost, tax percentage, store the sales tax percentage, total tax to store the amount of sale taxes the user will pay, and the final cost, which is the original price plus the amount of sale taxes. This is what we will see if we run the program. To create a program with the same functionality in App Inventor, the approach is similar. However, there are several other elements involved in the process. Since this is a graphical environment, first, we design the user graphical interface, or GUI, in the designer. Then, we code our logic or program in the blocks editor. And finally, we run our program in the emulator or in a real phone. Now, let's get busy building it. Well, I have created already the user interface. Price or cost is going to be input by the user in a text box that I call price text box. Sales tax is going to be input in a, in a box that I call it tax text box. You can change the name of this component, click in the rename button. Remember, you should uh, name them something that is meaningful and intuitive. Now, this is the label where I'm going to print the final cost. These are the properties of the final cost label. Now let's move to create our first variable. So here is the block editor. In App Inventor, every variable has to be defined before you can use it. To define a variable, in the Blocks Editor you select from the built-in tab and the Definition menu a variable block. Then you choose the name. As many other programming languages, variables' names have to start with a letter and spaces and symbols are not allowed. Only the underscore symbol is allowed. We are going to name our first variable price. After the name, you have to initialize the variable by assigning a value block. It can be a number or it can be a text. In this case, we're going to use a number, zero. Let's define our second variable, tax percentage. Remember, the spaces and symbols are not allowed. So, this is not a good name for a variable, neither this one or this one. But this one is. To select a value, you can use the menu, or just simple type a number and hit enter. A good place, a block for you to use. In the same way, you define all the other variables. Let's test our app. At this point, it does nothing, but at least we have no errors. Now, let's keep working in our app. When the user clicks on the Resolve button, we assume he or she has already entered the corresponding values in the text boxes of our interface. So the next step is to catch the click event of the button. For this, in the tab My Blocks, we look for the Resolve button, and among these green blocks, which are event handlers, we find the one that handles the click event, that is, the Resolve button dot click. We drop it in Blocks Editor. Here is where we are going to put the logic of what we want to happen when the user clicks on this button. First, we need to store in our variable price the value the user input for the price. We need a block to do that. 
we go to my blocks tab and then my definitions to find the block for the variable price. Wow, we have two. The darker one is to set or modify the value of the variable. That's why it says set global and the name of our variable. The other block is used when you want to retrieve or make reference to the value stored in the variable. In this case, we need to set the global one. The user entered the price in the price text box. So we'll find among my blocks the options we have for this text box. Among the properties of this component, we have to find the text property. Properties are like variables, but they are associated to a component. For example, our price text box is storing the value the user entered in its text property. There is a pair of blocks for each property. One block to set the value, in case we want to modify the property, and one more to get the current value, in case we want to retrieve or make reference to the value stored in that property. In our case, we want to get the value stored in the text property and assign it to the variable price. We do almost the same for the tax percentage variable. Then we need to calculate the total tax. For that, we need to create the corresponding expression using some of the math blocks or operators. Let's first get from the math menu the multiplication block. Then we have to multiply the price times the tax percentage. To obtain those values, we need the corresponding blocks for my definitions. You will have something like this. Now we need to divide the result of this expression by 100. Let's first get a division block. Let's plug the previous expression in the first socket. Then we plug the literal block, a number block, with the value 100 in the second socket. This is the expression representing the formula we need in this case. Piece of cake, right? Next step, we need to calculate the final cost, which is the sum of the original price plus the total tax. We need an addition block. We plug the block that gets the value of the variable price in the first socket and the block corresponding to the total tax variable in the second socket. That's it. We have our expression or formula. Finally, we have to print out the new final cost. We are going to display the final cost in the text property of the final cost label. So we get the corresponding block. In this case, I'm using a join block from the text menu, which concatenates two strings. In the first socket, I place the string final price with colon and space. In the second socket, I put the value stored in the final cost variable. Something interesting to notice is that the join block can concatenate a text or a string with a number. The conversion of, of the number to a string or text is done automatically. That's it. Let's test it. We input 100 as cost or price and 8.5 as sales tax. And this is the result, 108.5. Okay, this time we have succeeded at the first try. Most of the time this doesn't happen. Try to code incrementally. Code a little, test your code, and then keep coding and repeat. Okay, let's summarize what we have learned. This is the way you define variables. This is the way you update or set a new value for a variable. You can create expressions and assign them to variables, combining several math blocks. Please. Review and practice the concepts presented in this video and stay tuned for the next one. I'll talk to you soon.